giant slalom day at the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games and this is where it gets serious with the second runs about to start for the men and women in each of our three disciplines. Visually impaired, standing and sitting. The morning session saw plenty of excitement and thrills and spills and a, a fair share of shocks as well. Certainly in the men's sitting competition, the men's standing is wide open. Momoko leads the women's sitting. That's a surprise. But we're going to start with the second run of the women's visually impaired discipline. It is hot, hot, hot here. It really is. The sun has come out and is baking us on the mountain. They're out in the shirt sleeves out there in the tribunes league of nations among the uh, supporters here at the johnson alpine center and indeed there we go 12 degrees well it feels warmer it really does soft snow out there and it will crunch up a good deal more the more runners we have down the mountain here so it's been a, a tremendously exciting day so far and uh, it's all set to get even livelier. So, women's giant slalom, second run of the uh, visually impaired category for the women. This is a competition led by Henrietta Farkasova from Mena Fitzpatrick and Melissa Perrine. But uh, we're going to go in reverse order and uh, so much to look forward to here. Afternoon session. Starting with the visually impaired women. I know someone once famously said the sun will come out tomorrow. Well, it hasn't. It's come out today and in force. It's shining bright on these athletes. The sunlight here in Pyeongchang will glimmer beautifully on an accessory if you are lucky enough to finish inside the top three. The final preparations at the top. The expectant friends family and general supporters at the bottom these lucky people have been derobing all the way through the course of the competition some have got nothing left to go it is that warm here at the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games 927 meters is how we start we drop 382 of those to the finish line 46 gates 43 of those considered turning gates Yongchun giant slalom has claimed a few victims already here on day five who can hold their nerve who has the technique to deliver medals for their home nation women's giant slalom visually impaired second run of some exciting competitions six classifications three for men three for women and we're moments away here in this the VI category. The question is, can anyone stop Henrietta Farkasova and her guide Natalia Subatova from taking yet another medal? They're three from three. Can they make it four? Nobody else across any of the other classifications has managed it. The great Marie Boschet looked like she was on course for it. Didn't happen for her. <laughs> Shaffle Huber's had difficulty as well. So it's down to Fakasova to be the dominant force in the VI. We start in reverse order, unless there are 15 plus athletes. We'll talk to you about that as we go along. To start us off then, Eva Galuza of Croatia, Anna Zichman. Here's the guy, she's a registered B3 athlete. B3 means that uh, within the VI category, they have the highest level of visual acuity. They may see a little more than those in B2, who will indeed see more than those in a B1 classification. Only B1 athletes are competing in the men's events here. Pyeongchang. The loser. 17. 
very scratchy World Cup campaign, competed at the World Championships in Paradiso last year. All right. And gets us underway for the important second run. If you fail to finish in the first run, it's nice and simple. In this sport, you just don't get a chance to medal in the second. The loser finishing in 128-28 uh, in the first run, which uh, meant that she was the slowest of the athletes. But a lot of these athletes come here with very different agendas to others. The uh, the upper echelon of the sport know that they're in a dogfight for medals. Some of these ladies and gentlemen here in Pyeongchang are helping to promote para sports across the nation that they yeah, come from. And Eva Galusa fits that bracket. Eva She's Eva just 17 Eva. with the expert stewardship of her coaches. And they get quicker, 258-13. Sever is uh, and Sever, who has a, a big, big name in this VI classification, but it's just not her game so far. Gold in Sochi and the Star and the Super Combined. This is her first outing here on day five. Yeah, it's much better. Be 0.78. You're a neutral Paralympic athlete. The first one was a 126. This is 123.44. She goes top. Lacey Manella and Sadie Dubal from the United States of America in their second run. She's looking visibly quicker than the first two athletes we've had. Stacey just tucking herself in a moment ago and really getting up to speed, just slowing a little here through the trickier section. Took that year out after Sochi to study. Once you have a break from sport, as anyone will tell you, it's, uh, you're playing catch up afterwards. But Stacey Manella was serious about her education. Wanted to make sure she got everything out of that first. Yeah, the Ten seconds quicker than the previous leader to 240.01. Yang J. Rim only had a 0.97 lead over Stacey Manella from the first run. 28 year old from Seoul. <laughs> Ten months on the sidelines in 2016, early 2017, due to a nasty injury to a right shin bone. One twenty eighty one in the first run. Born partially sighted in her right eye. On 59 inside Manella. Jay Rim goes to the top, 238-42. Husband and wife pairing from the US next. Son Brockton will be watching on. 45 year old Daniel Umstead. Just heard Rob shout, Have you got me? Now confirming that she has. She's uh, wearing part of one of the gates. Rather like a Superman cape. Or Wonder Woman. Go, 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 go. Her stats show it numerous yeah, medals in the Paralympics past. It might not be on this occasion. No, 237 29, there's the wave. And now starts the debrief. 
husband and wife to the sister act. Part two. <laughs> Helen Asana. Competing in a venue that's becoming a sauna. It's uh, hotting up on the snow. Hotting up in the stands. And these two have felt what it's like to pick up a medal here in Pyeongchang. They would be delighted to do it again, but it's a tough, tough quest in the women's VI category these days. Across the line there at the top, 233.89. Anna leads. Still six to come, though. Millie Knight and Brett Wilde, and maybe they didn't expect to be in this position going into the second run. Sixth, it's a long way from the norm for these two. Yes, they might have finished fifth in the slalom and giant slalom in Sochi. But things have improved dramatically. <laughs> For Millie Knight since okay. then, the introduction of Brett. She went through a whole host of different guides after Sochi to figure out which was best. And uh, they settled on Brett Wilde. What a good choice that proved to be when they became the downhill world champion. Silver in the giant slalom. So that's why sixth would have hurt. After the first run, Brett will be driving her on. He is a big influence on Millie Knight. Nineteen-year-old, the other Brit in their squad is only 19 as well. So Britain have a fairly bright future here in the VI category, but she's dropped time. She's behind Sana now. And this is going the way it was scripted back in the UK. Still the early hours over in uh, Great Britain. I'm sure plenty of people have tuned in to watch this young lady come down with Brett Wilde. Youngest ever Brit to compete in the Paralympics. He's wrestled it back here. Point zero two has made up the time that was lost in the first section. Can she do enough? to wrestle her way into medal contention. You'd fancy it's uh, a task too far to achieve, but you just never know in para-alpine skiing. Knight gliding through the final gate into the line. She comes and drops behind again. 234.52. Lost her slender lead at the start, picked it up. Goes back in the second. There's our current leader. There's a lady. But he's also a great Britain record breaker, the first to win the gold at the uh, Paralympics. She was a, a ski barbie when she was young, younger, and that's what inspired her to get onto some skis. On the Super G in Sochi. This is her third games, Kelly. Only just about made the team with a late decision, but across the line, 232.79, she goes to the top. And with only four to go, you just have to cross your fingers at this point. Hi. Hello, Amy. Here you are at the Vista. Sometimes you try and let you hear the audio from the guides and the skiers might be able to make out but uh, her guide, Lucien Gertau, asks her a question each time, she says yes.
communicating their way down. Those headsets controlled by Bluetooth, the microphone in front of the faces means that they can communicate all the way through. And they've delivered a 231-93. They're top with three to come. There is every chance they'll medal here. Perrine did the unthinkable yesterday, started in sixth for the second run of the Super Combine and managed to come away from the Zhongxian Alpine Center with a medal. It was a fabulous second performance. Can she do it again with the help of Christian Geiger, the guy? The green and gold of Australia would love gold. Sure, the 29 year old will take a medal of any color. This is her third game. It was the first time she got a Paralympic medal on day four, and she's given herself another on day five. 228 8 1. What color will it finish? It's gold for now. Huge cheers from the Australians. Now, Great Britain have Mena Fitzpatrick. If she gets above Melissa Perrine, then a shot for Farkasova will give Great Britain the goal for the second game's running. If this is Jen Keo's voice, you might be able to hear screaming those instructions into the 19-year-old from Macclesfield here. An army skier in her own right is Jen Keo. Nearly twice the age. But it doesn't matter as they come to the line, she goes top. 0.47. There's just one more skier to stop Great Britain from taking goal. 228-34. And now the expectation starts. Who can stop them? The best in the world is the answer to that. This lady doesn't know what second position is. Brutally dominant in the first few days of competition. Every gold has gone round the necks of the Slovakian pairing of Fakasova and Subatova. Does this competition continue the same way? It certainly appears it as they come into shot of the crowd. Two more gates for yet another gold. Oh, it's mesmerizing. 5.3 seconds the difference. 2.23 flat. A difference of five and a half seconds between these two. Absolute wonders of the piece. Slovakian flags keep on waving. They may as well just leave them in the air. The fists are raised in victory once more for Henrietta Fakasova and Natalia Subatova. Well, they were brilliant in Sochi. Three goals there. Two, uh, three goals, sorry, in uh, two, 2010. Two more in Sochi. They had a couple of disqualifications which they wanted to exercise that ghost and they, they've done it already. Four out of four. This is some some competition for Henrietta Farkasova. Fitzpatrick and Keo in silver. Perrine and Geiger with bronze. That's how the visually impaired women's giant slalom finishes up. Your hands, uh, please, no political gestures, but you know, so, my congratulations. Stunning stuff <laughs> from these ladies. They uh, don't really get much time to breathe and experience it. The uh, recognition announcement ceremony wanders out in front of the baking hot sun and the stand. Catch side of the stand and you'll see the volume of people that have wanted to come and watch this event. As we look back on some of the moments from this run from Barkasova and Subatova. 223 0 0.
You see the celebrations from the guide. You know, people often forget the role or how important that is within high skiing. In swimming, they have tappers to make the turns. In alpine, they have the guides. It's all a trust exercise. Speeds of nearly 100 kilometers an hour. You have to trust every word and every instruction that comes from the person in front of you. Well, there's no hiding it, unlike these Austrian fans are trying from the sun. Henrietta Farkasova and Natalia Srebatova are bossing the women's VI category at the moment. Here, Ribbon is in. You and friends away from this as well. It's not a, a case of just coming to work every morning. That's not how that works. You have to have that bond. I mentioned Billy Knight having to go through a few coaches and to guides to get it right. And the winner does take that trust element. Eye on telepathic relationship is needed as well. But here comes the recognition announcement. We are in exactly the same order as we were on day four. No blink or adjust your TVs. It is the same people from yesterday in the same order. Melissa Perrine in her third Paralympics, finally breaking her medal duck. Picking up bronze yesterday. Well, she's done it again here on day five. She didn't have to come from as far behind as she did in the super combined, but it is a bronze for Melissa Bereed and Christian Geiger of Australia. And those ladies and gentlemen have enjoyed it. Waiting to honor Melissa Bereed. Silver for Great Britain once again. This lady. Had a horrific first day. She fell within the first 30 seconds of her first run at a Paralympics. She certainly made up for it in the following three days. Three straight medals for Mena Fitzpatrick and Jen Keogh. I am not sure how you solve a problem like these two. Henrietta and Natalia, Vakasova and Subotova. The dream team do it again. It's gold for Slovakia. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to the Paralympic medalists. Congratulations. Start again. Exactly as they were yesterday. Elated to have come in with those top three spots. More action to come here, Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. So we're going to move on now with the second run of the women's standing competition. 15 skiers entered into this one from eight nations. And it's France, Germany, and Canada who have their athletes in the podium positions at the moment. Three by Shea Andrea Rothfuss. That is the way things tend to go in the women's standing competitions. It was by Shea won Rothfuss two in the downhill and Super G here in Pyeongchang. Rothfuss came second in the Super Combined two. That was behind Molly Jepsen, who also on the bronze in the downhill. Slowest. And the first run, that was Ilma Kazazic who goes first here from Bosnia Herzegovina, 131.28. So that's nearly 19 and a half seconds behind the quickest time posted by Marie Boche. But just a, a finish here is a result for Ilma because there was a DNS and a DNF in slalom and giant slalom in Sochi. So this is her second Paralympic Winter Games, but uh, it wasn't a, a good outcome for her in either of those disciplines. So she'll concentrate here on finishing 
She did finish the slalom competition at the Tavizio World Championships last year. It was an 11th place finish for her there. So, 131-28, looking to break three minutes here, and uh, that would be a good result for her. From Zemal Bjedic University in Mostar back home. They don't ever portray this uh, philosophy, there are no physical limitations. The only limitations is that they. Only 19 years of age, Elma Kazazic. So she will be back for more, surely, in Beijing 2022. The flag bearer for Bosnia and Herzegovina at the opening ceremony of these Winter Games. Well, she'll enjoy that one next to her name, but it's not going to last for long. So, second slowest, Annie Hondo from the first run. And already 13.40 seconds inside the time of Kazazic. 3.03.05. But uh, we expect, well, Boshe and the leaders to come in around about 2.25, 2.26, something like that. And both runs are calculated, of course. These athletes will try and push it. They will live right on the edge. In the the line, the time they push on and try to make sure of medals. And the gold medal in particular with Boche and Rockers and Jepsen in there. Hondo immediately overtakes Kazazic after that second run, 120.26. Neutral Paralympic athlete Anastasia Koroshova is next down. She finished 13th in the giant slalom competition in Sochi. She was 11th in the slalom. She had a first run time of 1, 2, 4, 6, 5. And she's outside the time of Ami Hondo. So the athletes first to go in the second run of the women's GS for standing competitors will look to finish in as respectable a combined time as possible down the dip down the home straight for a shaver she's going to be tight on that time of 45 3 8 47 5 2 so 2.14 outside and still behind Annie Hondo Seventeen-year-old Mel Pemble was ninth in the downhill competition here, uh, representing Canada. She had a time of one minute twenty-two point four five in the first run. It was ten point four one seconds behind the leading time of Marie Boshe. She seizes the provisional lead here, better than Ami Hondo through that first intermediate. Mel has cerebral palsy which affects her ability to walk and the coordination of her right hand. She was actually born in Great Britain, Mel Pemble. But nine years ago, moved to Vancouver Island in Canada in a lovely winter sport opening in that part of the world. Most venue for the Winter Olympics and Paralympic Winter Games back in 2010. And by just a shade over four seconds, Mel Pemble moves into the provisional lead. Four of 15 have completed their second runs in this women's standing event in the giant slalom here on the mountain at the Junction Alpine Centre. Erin Latimer comes down. Tenth outside of Mel Pemble's time, her compatriot's time. 21 years of age, Erin. Seventh, eighth, ninth, and a DNF in Sochi. Two sixth place finishes at the World Championship. So that gives you the kind of indication of where she's likely to finish. Not a, a podium athlete, really. Not yet, anyway. Uh, into second. So now Pendle's lead remains intact as the runners come down thick and fast now in this second run. Back up to the top, we see Stephanie Jalen coming down. Pair of bronzes in Sochi in the Super Combined and the Super G. So she's been on Winter Olympic podiums. Stephanie Jalen 
born with a, a condition that resulted in the left side of her body being underdeveloped, her left arm shorter than her right, her left leg amputated when she was an infant. There plenty of challenges throughout her life. Try to rise to the challenge here. Bethany Jalen of a good finishing time in this giant slalom competition at Pyeongchang 2018. She had the 121 to 6 in the first run, Stephanie Jalen. And she's going to come over in a combined time of 237.43. That's a quick run, it really is. 116 in the second run down the hill. And she storms into the lead. Frédéric Turgeon next down. 7.38 seconds off Marie Boschet's time at the end of the first run. But all she's focusing on right now is the mark of Stephanie Jalen. And she's almost two seconds better than it at that first checkpoint. Frédéric Turgeon of Canada in her first Paralympic Winter Games at the age of just 18. Three 18-year-olds in this competition. We've already seen 17-year-old Mel Pemble. Still not the youngest in this competition. That honor lies with Ali Kunkel, who will come next. So she's just got to beat that 2 3 7 4 3 to take the overall lead. And she does it by 0.49. So almost half a second better. Frederic Turgeon suddenly occupies the gold medal position. This is what it's all about. Love these second run competitions where the lead and the podium changes almost within the blink of an eye. Ali Kunkel, just 16 years of age, comes down. Breakthrough championship was at the Worlds last year in Tarvizio. Tenth in the giant slalom, seventh in the slalom. Absolutely brilliant form. Comes from a skiing family, her dad loved the sport, introduced her to it, and Ali Kunkel, to the tune of 2.36 seconds, suddenly is the new leader. Back up we go to see the second run of Maria Papalova, 36 years of age, 117.29 was her first run time. Five and a quarter seconds outside the competition leading mark, which remember was set by Marie Boschet, who will run for the second time last here. 1.76 inside Ali Kunkel's time. So we're looking at a, a provisional new leader, a fresh leader in this competition. Six to go after Papalova has come down fifth in the downhill. Best result, fourth, agonizingly just off the podium in the slalom in Sochi. But she is our new leader here. 2.82 better than Ali Kunkel. Now comes the nervous wait. Anna Maria Rida comes next for Germany. Bronze medalist in the slalom at the World Championships last year, but she was disqualified. She missed the gate in the GS in Tarvizio. Anna Maria Rida, sixth best time in the first run, and now she's gone quicker than Papalova by 0.81. So less than a second, but that's enough. And that at present will bump. Papalova down into second place. Anna Maria Rida coming into the final section. Again, you can see the finish line at this point through the final gates. Three to go. Two, one, and over the line by 0.47. Again, a new leader. The scoreboard changes again. Fifth quickest in run one from Slovakia, Petra Smartsova. Two bronzes in Sochi, two silvers in the Worlds. 
been competing at the Winter Paralympic Games since 2006 in Torino. So the uh, total time from the two runs of Anna Maria Rida, 231.29. So she has to do 115 or so here in the second run to take the provisional lead, and she's done it by 0.23. Well, her run was 114.73. The lead changes hands again. All of a sudden, it's Petra Smartseva holding the parcel. Alana Ramsey. Well, she's really competitive. 3.74 off the pace. 1.1578. Alana Ramsey, pair of bronzes in the Alpine standing events, also for Canada in this Winter Paralympic Games so far. The nine medals have gone to just four athletes in the giant slalom competition in the uh, standing disciplines. So Alana Ramsey, world championship silver medalist, and she has three bronzes as well. She's coming down and she's going to be inside Smartsova's time here of 231.06. But by how much though? By 1.80. A new leader, and it's Alana Ramsey. But now, now it's the top three. Molly Jepsen in the bronze medal position. So she would have got the bronze had the competition ended after the first run. Molly Jepsen in a 114.44, so she was 2.40 outside Marie Boschet's 112.04. So she's got an awful lot to do to get the gold medal, but you never know. Going well here, Molly Jepsen gold, super combined, bronze, downhill in her first Olympics. She's taken some of the limelight away from Marie Boschet. And Andrea Roth first, and by 3.54 seconds, Jepsen guarantees herself a medal. But what colour will it be? We've just got two to come, and they are the big two. They are the ones that generally finish one and two. Rothbus, three silver medals in three events already here at the PyeongChang Winter Olympics. Now then, 113.29, so that was just 1.25 seconds slower than Marie Boschet. The total to beat is at 2.2572. That was Molly Jepsen's combined time from the two runs. She's uh, capable of that. It's going to be tight here, coming into the uh, final drop down. So the last turn, and three gates to go, just to beat that 22572. She's done it by just over half a second. So it's going to be another medal for Andrea Rothfuss. But just what colour will it be? Well, probably heading for another silver. Jepsen with the bronze, but we shall see. It is all down now to the queen of the piece, Marie Boschet. Two gold medals so far. Crashed out in the super combined. 2.12 inside the time of Rothfuss. So we're looking at a hat-trick of gold medals for Marie Boschet, the flying French woman. She's 24 years of age. She went down in 1.12.04, and she's looking good for the uh, same kind of time here. That would be enough to win the gold medal by a second. It's Boshe does it again, and it was comfortable. Boshe with yet another gold medal in women's standing para-alpine skiing. Andrea Rothfuss again with the silver in women's para alpine standing skiing. She's done it once more in four events. Marie Boschet has three gold medals. She did it in 2-2-2-9-2. Two, 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 two. Well, she was two seconds better in that second run down than her first timing.
Mary Boschet has done it again. Roth was surely sick of the side of silver, but she has another. And Molly Jepson wins the bronze for Canada. Well, she had that competition in the palm of her hand, wire to wire, Mary Boschet. And she has done it again. So, just a moment for a breather and uh, to let it all sink in. And then we will see the recognition announcements where our uh, medal winners are paraded in front of the stands. Probably want to shed one or two layers as well because the temperature continues to soar and uh, the mercury measuring the quality of competition is rocketing as well. Mary Boschet, just 24 years of age from Albertville. The record is quite stunning. Four gold medals in Sochi, and you can bolt another three onto that from here in Pyeongchang. And the Worlds as well, she's won in all the disciplines. 14 gold medals down the years at the World Championships. She just uh, blows the competition out of the water. You do wonder, actually, the uh, standing disciplines for the holiday medals here. The most big start game. Well, she didn't manage it in the Super Combined, but it's been a perfect skier elsewhere. Gold, gold medal in five events as well. Slalom, which has become later in the program. But uh, an outstanding well, day's work at the Number office again for Marie Boschet. Quickly uh, putting the disappointment of the Super Combined behind her. Molly Jepson has another medal, her third of these games. Another bronze after she finished third in the downhill. The first Olympic being for Molly Jepson, Number just 18. Germany. Silver again for Andrea Rothfuss. Four events so far. Only second in each of them. Still has the Paralympic gold from the slalom four years ago. Andrea. But we salute Marie Boschet. She's done it again. Seven Winter Paralympic gold medals. The outstanding athlete from Albertville. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a quite brilliant for France. Molly Jepson, Andrea Rothfuss and Marie Boschet, your podium in the women's giant slalom stand. to the women's giant slalom sitting category next up then and a surprise leader perhaps after the first well, run a huge you, surprise though because Momoka Momoka has finished in the medals three times already the highest she's been is the silver she sits in top spot waiting for her second run but she'll have to wait a whole lot longer because we of course go in reverse order one minute there's uh, around about 60 seconds before Liu Sitong of the People's Republic of China starts her second run didn't compete at all in the World Cup circuit or the World Championships this is her big international debut took up the sport because she just wanted to challenge herself and with the caliber of Van Impelen, Lowe, Schaffelhuber, Forster, Marocca, Stephanie Victor of course, she's in the right place if she wants to challenge. Of course this morning 
also testing her to a 126.75. So this is two, Liu one, Sitong, four, People's Republic five, of China. Her impairment comes as a result of a traffic accident. Inspired by the Chinese short track skaters Wang Meng and Wu Dajing. First ball outside. Liu. Personal conquest here will be to put in two good times. To demonstrate that she can be backed and nurtured and head towards Beijing. For the next games. She's only 23. Maybe she can inspire a future generation of Sitski racers. Power Alpine racers in general, I suppose. The U Sitong. Be watched by a nation. And as she heads down. Her own personal achievements being completed. She's into the final drop down. There's a short left and right at the top of the brow of this hill and then it's a, a sharp right into the final drop of course <laughs> has 48 <laughs> gates <laughs> it's been navigated as best it can be by Liu Sitong Corey <laughs> Pendergast of Australia had a FD lead over Sitong, but uh, knowing Tory, he wouldn't have wanted to have been second from bottom after the first run. A determined 27 year old will come out here with every intention of a much quicker time. You can only go out and try and get above the ones above you, so. Will be Bendergast's go, next quest. Journey down a hill to go up a table. Bendergast 2015 gives you a 2.31.37 from Dyke side. Maury Stevens from the United States of America in Beverly. 6.75 seconds the difference already. Stevens motoring on. Gold in Torino. Silver in 2010. Bronze in 2014. Natural progression backwards is outside the medals, and that's where she has been so far. But this is pretty quick, you know, coming to the line. She's put nearly 10 seconds between herself and anyone else. That run is 112.93, 231.85. That's impressive. Forster, gold winner already here in Pyeongchang. The uh, event this morning, the first run, didn't suit her in the slightest. The 22 year old had her struggles. Lives in Freiburg these days. Studied psychology, She's given herself a pep talk. In the gap, taking on some energy food, and we'll see what she can accomplish with her second run. In towards the line, oh, just goes ahead of Laurie Stevens. Well, there wasn't a mammoth gap between them when she started, it's only a small one there now, but she is top. Well, a shuffle hoover 
Right, Annalena Forster would not have expected to have been in the position she was in, ranked sixth after the first run, having won everything there was to win in Sochi. Started the 2018 games with a bang. Didn't win on day three. That put an end to a seven straight gold medal winning streak. She returned to winning ways from way back. Comes from the east of Munich near the Austrian border. Here we go. Crossing the line in two gates time. Will she have the lead? She does. Schaffel Huber throws top. So many quick runners from the first one still left out. They have surprised a few that don't know the Power Alpine circuit. They were only watching the first few days, and that's a huge surprise. Heike Edda, after a decent first run, the 29 year old is our first DNF in the women's sitting giant slalom. Here we see, oh, just gets the slightest of bumps, and as you try and correct it, the back end takes the inside edge, and away you go. Well, you'll stay at the side of the circuit, nice and safe over there. The course markers will keep her tucked in towards the safety netting. Now, Stephanie Victor was delighted at coming fourth because it meant she was in with a real shout of a medal here on day five. There's only one more chance for the women after today to take home one of the Pyeongchang medals. Stephanie Victor has won in gold from 2006, won in gold from 2010, had a horrific accident in 2014, and the Super G has come here to exercise those demons, get rid of the memories herself and her husband, Marcel Kouanen, the reason she switched from America to Switzerland. We're delighted with fourth. Three more the second attempt the gives them yes, a chance. One more mistake, mistake above her. She can go in the first. Two, she can. Three, five, three, One mistake three, now. Five, and Stephanie Victor will have herself a Pyeongchang medal. Stay true. Stay strong. Stay on the course. Victor is top. And uh, it took a lot here on the fifth day, but she's showing the love. This lady hasn't had the games. She or maybe the nation of Austria were expecting. A couple of DNFs, doesn't want one here, that's a fact. Starts in third position. Schaffelhuber, a great rival, is nowhere to be seen in this competition. So it's there for Loesch if she wants it. Some good times for Van Impel and Morelka this morning. Can Loesch put the pressure on? She stays on course, stays between the penultimate gate and the last, and leads. 1.23 is the difference. 2.29, 3.0, our new leader. Two to go. Expect the Dutch have had a great men's sit ski with the Jeroen Kampstra already a Paralympic champion, Linda van Impelen. It's took until this competition for her to really shine and show the form that she's been having in the World Cup this year. But any slight mistake will be costly. And Impelen was 140 behind Muller Oka. You have to fancy the Japanese 21-year-old from here on in, but Van Impelen can put more pressure on. Final few gates, the Dutch are dancing. Oh, and they go it up. Six one hundredths of a second, and Claudia Loesch will not win gold again here. And the 
expression from the Austrians said it all. There's delight in the orange corner. Only one person can stop Linda Van Impelen. And this is such the lady. Momoka, Momoka, I will tell you through the World Cup series, was very frustrating. She would do a brilliant first run and then come up with something crazy in the second. Now is the time to have learned from those World Cup mistakes. Now is the time to get rid of those silly mistakes that were costly in the World Cup series. Can she keep the speed? The 21-year-old Japanese sit skier with two gates to go. He's well inside. Momoka Muraoka of Japan at 21 is Paralympic champion. laughing to herself as she comes into the victory area. It's not to be for Stephanie Victor. She has to settle for fourth position. Nadia Loesch does not look for happy Sinski in third. Linda Van Impelen is delighted with her silver. But the celebrations belong to Japan. 20 years of age from Saitama. She has aspirations of trying to get to the Summer Games in Tokyo in 2020, but she's smashed out a gold medal here on the slopes, holding back the tears. Okay, they're going to turn sure how well really quick out of here, so just she's going to be able to hold those back. Thank you. Hi. 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 Thanking her opponents, gracious in victory. She was inspired by male Sitski at Taiki Mori, who we've seen in competition plenty here in Pyeongchang. And here is just how this young Japanese athlete destroyed the course. Not a name that many expected to be etched into the history books, but with Schraffel Huber retiring, Stephanie Victor age 48 these days a struggle for Forster in this particular event it opened the door up and people like Momoka Muraoka and Linda Van Impelen have skied their way through it to Paralympic success <laughs> so, block the tears for now but I think at some point it will hit Momoka Muraoka maybe when she sees all of these people from the stands. They line themselves up in the Van Impelen has uh, had an emotional last couple of moments. Coaching staff and teammates alike, they come rushing across the moment you come through that entryway. Pushing herself onto the recognition announcement area. afraid to say what she thinks, Claudia. Questioned a few of the courses in the World Cup for their safety. Known to speak her mind. I can tell you her mind. Working overtime right now and wondering how it is she gets back to picking up gold. There's a smile in there. But it isn't as wide as she wants it to be. One more attempt for Claudia Loesch to pick up a goal. But 
She hasn't managed. Silver medalist representing the Netherlands. The Netherlands getting announced as silver medal winners and Linda van Impelen wearing a smile as wide as the course itself. Plenty of Dutch flags and supporters here at the Jongshan Alpine Centre. Gold medalist but at just 21, the, the message has been sent. Momoka Muraoka is now on the world scene and it's just starting to sink in for her. A little shake of the head, maybe, in disbelief. The lady who wants to go to the Summer Games in 2020 in athletics. Certainly knows how to take a mono ski from top to bottom in quick fashion. 2.26.53 and Japan have themselves a Paralympic Alpine champion. The final runs on Giant Slalom Day at Pyeongchang 2018 continue with the second run for the visually impaired men. Jakob Krako is the defending Olympic champion, but he's only third at halfway, over three seconds slower than our leader, Giacomo Bertanoli. Miroslav Hadaus is better placed, and Mac Maku as well, out of the medals. Bertanoli had a brilliant first run, 105.12. And that's 3.19 seconds better than Harouse. 3.37 better than Jakob Krako, and over four seconds quicker than Mac Marku. So we're going to start with Zolt Balog. We're back to the visually impaired disciplines. So uh, we have guides with the Alpine athlete Bencher Boshi is the guide for Hungarian Balog. And uh, he is a B1 categorization, along with Marek Kabatska, who was fifth quickest <coughs> down the hill. So that means that the guide here for the B1 athlete has a, a speaker on his or her back. There's no visual acuity, the lowest impairment, no light perception or, or very little light perception. The athletes are requested to use eye shades. The bench Boshi and Zolt Balog will get this second run in the men's officially impaired competition underway. So the field of 18 has been reduced to 16. We will see the uh, Top 15 go in reverse order, and then the rest. So there's only one thereafter. So Daniel Mishak will go down last for the Croatians. But this is Zolt Balog for, for Hungary. So that time, the first one for Zolt Balog, 1-2-7-8-7. And uh, when you look at Bertanoli's time, 105, 1-2, that's the difference of 22.75. So 22 and 3.4 seconds. So the instructions come through the loudspeaker. And uh, you see the effective time down in the 50, late 50%. So that represents the uh, maximum factor time you see the clock slowing down it's an equalization measure and it ensures fair competition because although each of our athletes here fall under the bracket is visually impaired there are subcategories within that and that uh, Balog has struggled to keep straight he was just sort of banking to the left hand side there and kind of overcooked it but not sufficiently to end his race it is uh, a big deal to finish. So Balog, 25 years of age, he's competed in two World Championships. This is his first Paralympic Winter Games. 
There was a disqualification in the slalom and he didn't finish the giant slalom in La Molina, his major championship debut five years ago in Spain. That was at the Worlds. And then last year in Tavizio in Italy, a ninth in this event, the GS, and a seventh in the slalom. So more than respectable finishes for Zolt Balog thus far. Took at para-alpine skiing back in 1995 in Switzerland. It wasn't until 2011 that he started entering competitions and it's taken him another seven years to make it to his first Paralympic Winter Games. So slowly and steadily over the line. So Balog at least has a mark to set the rest of the field here, 253-27. Rank of 14 at the end of run one. Australia's Sean Pianta and his guide Jeremy Sullivan. Just a, a finish here would be a result for Sean. Five seconds. Two. The sole event here in Pyeongchang. He was enrolled for the GS and the slalom in Tarvitsio, but didn't finish either of those events at the World Championships a year ago. And we know that a knee injury affected his preparation for these Paralympic Winter Games. Previously, he broke both legs while skiing in December 2014. And that ruled him out for seven and a half months. Ahead of him is the guide, Jeremy O'Sullivan. The guide has to come from the same nation as the athlete. So his role model is the American Alpine Spear Ted Liberty, the Alpine champion the Torino, if memory serves me correctly. Ted Liberty has around 15% vision this game as a result of the effects of a virus he contracted 10 years ago while on holiday in Bali. So he suffered a complete kidney failure upon his return to Australia before he made a full recovery. And it's going to be a full competition, i.e. two completed runs here for Sean Pianta. 253-27 is the leading mark in the two runs of Zolt Balog thus far. And he's the first yeah, athlete down, down to the second <laughs> to take the lead. Oh, oh, five seconds better than Zolt Balog's mark. Wang Mingyu with his guy Yu Jae Hyung. He's just 22 and he says that his realistic target is the next Paralympic Winter Games in Beijing 2022. It's a very quick start there from Huang of Korea. Just as the sun passes behind the mountains, we've had terrific temperatures here. The crowds inside the Johnson Alpine Centre have been stripping down. It's been a day for shirt sleeves. Now, uh, you wouldn't have believed me, would you? If, uh, or anything of the Winter Games only a few short weeks ago. Anything to start off this competition. Well, the guide there, Ye Ju Hyung, takes a tumble. Wang Mingyu comes in in 2.37.08 from his two runs. So the provisional lead, but plenty more to come down. I think there, Yu Jae Hyung, Huang's guide, is okay, just dusting himself down. Have to get out of the way because back at the hill, we're seeing the run here of Tadius Kritz of the Czech Republic. 118.03, his first run time, so 12th best, only 13 seconds away from the competition. Leading runner, Giacomo Bertinoli. By 4.60 seconds, Fritz is quicker than Wang. 232.48, as opposed to Wang's 237. 
Yeah. 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 But this is oh. the absolute joy of Thank these two run events. Lead changing hands the deeper we get down the second run order. Second Australian down after Sean Pianta is Patrick Jensen. 11.43 seconds away from Bertanoli. His time is 1.16.55. So needs to go the same again or better. Nudge Tadius Kritz down. Same time would be enough to install him as our provisional leader. Remember Bertanoli, our competition leader. Goes second to last. And else third to last. Kratko, fourth to last. They are our medalists at present. Leading time, 1-0-5-1-2. Don't think Jensen will be able to get anywhere near to that with his second run. Jensen in sporting category B2, final people of the four team in the B1 athletes. Is it with or the official field of less than five degrees radius? Patrick only made his major championship debut at the Worlds last year in Tavizio. BNF in the giant slalom fared a little bit better in the two runs of the slalom competition where he finished in ninth place. And at those Worlds last year, Patrick was a fairly strong there at the closing ceremony. So he's over a second quicker than Tadeusz Kitz. He needs to keep it going, needs to beat 2-3-2-4-8. Two, three, two, in fact, of time, on the bottom right of the screen, 88.04 is the fact of time percentage for Patrick. One gate to go, over the line, he's done it by 0.32. So we have a new leader, and it is Australia's Patrick Jensen. Just to tell you is that Burton Oli, our competition leader, were to match his first run time, it would be 2.10. In terms of the combined time, the totted time, if you will. Massieu Kretzel comes next, a, a B3 athlete from Poland. And we're getting into the athletes now who are closer to Burton Oli's time. Pezel was 8.63 down and 10th at the end of the first run. He's been competing at Winter Paralympic Games since uh, Vancouver and over the line, 5.73 seconds better than Patrick Jensen. We have a new leader. Janet Morgan Ford comes next. The grand old man of the competition, 53 years young, no less. And Morgan Ford with his guy Christoph Miner. First check for it, looking to break to 4 0, which is done by just four one hundredths. So we're on course here for another fresh leader in the men's giant slalom for visually impaired athletes at the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. Sun has moved across the mountain. Shadow's facing the other way now. And Morgan Ford right in over the line. A second better. And Massier Crezel, the 53-year-old, has the lead. Francis to come next. He was 6.10 away from the time of Giacomo Bertanoli. 
fifth of uh, more than respectable outcome in the downhill on day one of the Alpine competition at the uh, Johnson Centre. World champion in 2015 and 2013 in Canada and Spain, respectively. Been competing at World Champs since here on the Pyeongchang Hill in 2009. So fifth and a sixth in Sochi, a fifth in the downhill here. And he goes top. He's 3.98 seconds better than Morgan Thorpe's time. New leader, and it is neutral Paralympic athlete, even Franzer, and his guy German Agronowski. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paralympic athlete down next. This is the fellow with Bob, guided by Evgeny Geroyev. Already with a medal at these games. He was bronze in the super combined. Prince seven four inside his uh, rival's time. Eighth best time at the end of run one. Red Kozibov, nicely guided down. This is the drop down. Extra meters, extra speed needed. Is he going to beat that 2 2 1 3 9? He certainly is. By over a second, 1.17. So all of a sudden, it is neutral Paralympic athletes 1 and 2. Valery Red Kozibov from even France. <laughs> The veteran, Jan Santricana Maestegui, guided by Miguel Galindo Garces. He's 37 years of age. He's a, a downhill Paralympic champion. That happened in Sochi. It also happened four years previously in Vancouver. And a giant slalom B3 before the categorization system was tweaked. That happened all the way back in 2002. He was an Olympic champion, Jan. Santikana Maztegui, 110.43, over five seconds slower than Giacomo Bertanoli. The mark to beat combined is 220.22, and he's not quite there, he's just missed it. Second place for Jan Santikana Maztegui. So Valerie Red Kotobov sees his lead remain intact. Well, they're running out of skiers now. Kabatska to come, Marku to come, Kratzko to come, Haraus to come, Bertanoli also. And Malik Kabatska now. One of the two B1 athletes in this race. So the communication between Malik and his guide Maria Zetobikova is all important. And that's why we see a relatively low percentage in terms of factor time. The clock is slowing. There's a complicated but fair system employed here to ensure equalization across the individual impairments within the overall bracket of visually impaired athletes. So you hear the communication being barked through the loudspeaker, which is strapped to the back of the guide, and the B1 athletes have to wear goggles as well. And he's got count goggles. Kabatska putting down a, a really good time. 110.02. Inside five seconds of Bertinoli, 4.90. And uh, a really good run here for an athlete that's been at the Paralympic Winter Games since 2010 in Vancouver. So the Paralympic career stretches eight years just off the podium in the World Champs last year in Tavizio. Fifth in this event, the giant slalom. And closer in the slalom where he was four. So the overall mark is 220.22. Two, and he still has a bit of work to do if he's to come home inside that. We're just seeing him over the brow of the hill from the commentary position and the, the spectators now see him come into view, Marek Kabatska. That left turn through the final gates. 
three and two and the final gate followed by the finish line for Marek Kabatska by 1.29 he pushes Red Kozibov down into the silver medal position Marek Kabatska and his guide Maria Zatobikova are our new leaders the next four are where we might see the medals headed Here's Max Marku. He's a little underwhelming in his first run. Disappointed with his 109.44. That was four seconds away from Giacomo Bertanoli's mark. But Max Marku knows how to win races. Downhill champion here with Young Chang 2018. And let's not forget as well. Giant slalom champion from the Paralympics in 2014. So Marku will be gunning for that mark of 218.93. Leading second run time, a 108.91 of Marek Kabatska. A quite brilliant ski there from Marek Kabatska. By 1.42 he's done it, I think though Giacomo Bertinoli will be pretty confident of beating the 217.51. Well he's got to go 12 seconds slower than he did in the first run to not edge Marku out. Bertinoli he will come down very soon indeed but in the meantime this is Jakub Grazko. Slovakian superstar. Gold in the Super G, silver in the downhill. And winning medals all over the show. That's go, and by 2.52, he's on course here to take the lead. We'll see Hadouts come down and Bertinoli come down. But at the moment, it's Jakob Kratzko. Fine games already, although he was disqualified in the Super Combined. But just look at the history pair of uh, gold medals, I beg your pardon, three gold medals in uh, Vancouver, one in Sochi, and uh, comfortably moves to the top of our leaderboard, Jakub Kratzko with that run of 107.10, but it's still two seconds behind the individual run time of Bertinoli, but 215.59, it uh, keeps him on course for a medal. That house. 3.19 away from Burton Ollis time at the end of the first run. So the overall mark is what we're interested in. 2.1559. That house went 108.31. So he should have it here. Will it be enough though to pressure Burton Ollis? I'm not quite sure. But the two Slovakians, Krako and Harau, set for podiums. Miroslav Hadaus, gold in the super combined and over the line, slower than Kratzko to the tune of 2.08. Well, Kratzko has thrown it down and Hadaus has not known how to respond. We've seen a switch around of the positions there. Now then, is this the crowning of the king? Fabrizio Casal guides down at Giacomo Bertanoli. Two medals already. Bronze in the downhill. He got a silver in the Super G, and he is well inside Jakub Kratzko's time. Harau set to be pushed off the podium altogether. He will be uh, distraught about that. It's Giacomo Bertinoli with this competition in the palm of his hand, the Italian. Super combined world champion, and now, he is the Olympic champion, wasn't even close in the end. 5.08 is the margin for the Winter Paralympic champion in the men's giant slalom for visually impaired athletes, Giacomo Bertanoli. It's a victory from slightly left field in this individual discipline, but that is a pair of fabulous runs from Giacomo Bertanoli. 10512 and he went 
10539 in the second run, 210.51. Now then, the top 15 in these Winter Paralympic competitions go in reverse order, and then it's the rest. We only had 16 starting, and that Damir Nisdrak is at 25.33 seconds away from Bertinoli's time. So he gets the honour of coming in last here for Croatia. He was there in Sochi, 14th in this giant slalom event. Third slightly better in the slalom, where he was 11th in the, the DNF in the giant slalom last year in Tarvizio, and 8th in the slalom at the World Champs last year. In Paralympic skiing for 11 years, and that uh, comes in 44 seconds off the pace, so we'll finish last of 16, Damir Mizdrak. But we know the podium, and it is Italy from Slovakia, from Canada. And Mark Macu leaps into the bronze medal position, having been outside the top three coming into the second run. That's what's so exciting. There are so many variables. Thank you. But uh, the champion is crowned, and his name is Giacomo Bertanoli guided by Fabrizio Casal from four events he now completes the set a silver a bronze and now the gold medal it's come in the giant Island for visually impaired athletes Haraus had a shocker in the second run and was pushed out of the medals by Mac Marku Jakob Gratzko takes the silver Bertanoli our wire to wire winner It was exciting, wasn't it? Uh, thank you so much. Had house down in fourth place. And uh, a poor second run. 109.36. Oh, it's by just point four in the end. Had house pushed out of it. Well, he made it. <laughs> a few bumps on the way. I told you. But uh, yeah. Winter <laughs> Paralympic champion. <laughs> well, there was a pointer at Tavizio last year. He was second in the world champs. <laughs> now, though, it's an upgrade. He did win a gold. At the uh, World Championships last year, but that came in the Super Combined. But now he's at swap places with Matt Marcou. So the recognition announcements here. Get a salute medalist our medalists. Mac Maku, bronze. That's a goal under his belt already from the downhill. He's a world champion in the giant slalom. He has a winter Paralympic bronze here. Silver medalist representing Slovakia. Well, a disqualification in the Super Combined for Gratzko, but got a gold in the Super G, silver in the downhill. Another silver comes in the GS, Jakob Gratzko of Slovakia. Yongshang 2018, downhill bronze medalist 
the Super G silver medalist, and now the giant slalom gold medalist, Giacomo Bertanoli. Gold medal for Italy. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to the Paralympic medalist. He controlled the competition superbly, Giacomo Bertanoli. And the Italian walks away with the gold medal. Standing men's giant slalom, we go. It's a large field. Trimmed down from the morning, not because it's a knockout phase, but for the athletes that started this morning. Run one. Thank you. Three, there are four casualties in the six ski event. Thirty-eight survived run one. A little slippier out on the course this afternoon due to the extreme temperatures for this time of year that we're having. The uh, athletes themselves were saying that they're not really caught out. They came from a World Cup event last year around this time yeah, and the same thing happened it started cold and the power of the pyeongchang sun came out it's doing the same here there are several clouds up in the sky it would have affected the vi athletes more so than the standing or sitting the changes in the light won't have helped bright light on white never does so, fastest 15 first. Was the man that sat in 15th position at the end of the first run. Racing away. 24 year old. Set his marker on achieving a higher <laughs> position than 15. Certainly looks pretty quick. The man with just the use of the ski pole in his right hand. Customs officer when he's not throwing himself down a mountain at nigh on 100 kilometers an hour. Used to the said steady search as opposed to the frantic ski. Back to time isn't affected. Martin's impairment not considered to affect him enough to slow the clock. Really blazing a trail in the circuit as he comes up to the line. 19.47 is his overall time. He's done that in 109.16. It's uh, well over a second quicker than his first run. Robin Kusch, Swiss 19 year old. And Robin's down. Well, we were hoping to see him come through that camera shot a moment ago. It just hasn't happened. There he is underneath one of the other cameramen. And there he is riding out of the competition. Well, we're two athletes in, one down the bottom. One down on the snow. Five. Already. Five. One Five. position better off for somebody. Kopiancic will uh, know Robin Kusch's pain. He fell in exactly the same place on day four, right underneath that camera. Here we saw Robin Kusch momentarily getting back up this is Piancic he does come into shot so he's just a fraction further now than Robin Koos before him Piancic the 20 year old 
Now I'm down. And he's down. Well, he goes a fraction further than he went on day four. And he springs straight back up, does Nico Pjancic, but it's another DNF here in Pyeongchang for the young Austrian. Bends into this right-hander, just tries to get a little bit too close to the gate, and he has to try and manoeuvre himself because he realises he's going to clatter it. And in doing so, took himself off balance. It's all right having a tight line. But it's a fine line between a good line and a bad line. Thomas Thiel will be next. The birthday boy on January the 1st. One of those New Year's Day babies. The time since he was a baby, 31 now. Massively experienced, the fourth games for Thomas Field. Diagnosed with hemiplasia in his right arm at six months. Again, just the ability to use a ski pole in the left hand. Very little function with his right hand. Can he affect the standings? Only one from the first three in this second run so far have made it down. Thomas Peel is smashing through the time that Martin Wirtz is setting. Over a second quicker. There wasn't a great deal between Peel and Martin Wirtz. 0.5, in fact, five tenths of a second. Oh, Martin lets out a huge roar over those last couple of gates would signify he wasn't happy with something. He has to work hard to get his right arm caught up in the gate post. Tucked in to try and conjure up some more speed as he heads into the bottom section. This left leads to a singular right. Three gates to go. No one wants to go down in this section, and he doesn't. It's exactly 101. 218.46 for Thomas Peel of Switzerland. Ridley of Great Britain. Ridley from Eastbourne. coaches international and domestic level and people like Ewan Bennett, Dougie Neal and John Clark will have all done wonders for James Whitley the grandson of a former Northern Irish Prime Minister James Chichester Clark Across the line, 219-81, he's dropped down two places there while he waves. He won't be celebrating too hard, 110 the exact run time. Jamie Stanton. Twenty-three years old now. Rides in Aspen, Colorado. <laughs> and his hero is his dad, Michael. He inspires me to be the best person I can every single day. That's a great thing to say about your own father. This is his final and maybe fond farewell. It was nearly a bad farewell. He's going off to work in Wall Street. He's nearly in Nightmare Alley for a second, but uh, Stanton finishing in 2.21.3.0. Difficulties towards the bottom, the shake of the head tells you that. This is Thomas Walsh. Look, 
23 year old out on course and leader is the 31 year old Thomas Steele at the moment but Walsh is merrily inside that time oh just clipping that gate post and sending himself off balance all right going through it you hit it wrong it takes you off balance to the end of you but uh, Walsh comes down 16 31 2.15 seconds between him and Peel and he's we're delighted by that. Canada. No. Yeah. Yeah. From Finland. If this is your first time watching Santori, well then you note his right arm is tucked inside his uh, number bib. Nothing wrong with that in the rules. He has uh, a limited use of his right arm, so he tucks it in to keep it out of the way during his performances. And the 17-year-old from Lapin Ranta in Finland. Nerve damage in his right shoulder that he was born Here with. Here we go. Trying to be the 216. Six, combined at the World Championships. Right he is there. just six, ahead six, six, of six, Thomas five. Walsh. Oh, it's the second oh, fastest oh, second oh, run. Finn Flag Fan Club. <laughs> Clouding <laughs> over here <laughs> in Pyeongchang. The Asian Alpine Centre greets Marcus Salkin out. Just a little sidewards through the flat section a moment ago. 0.25 the difference. Former overall World Cup winner Marcus Salka, 26 years of age. Born with hemoplegia, which affects the right side of his body. You'll notice the strain on his right leg and the inability to always be able to control it as he takes left hand turns. 216, 26, job done from Marcus Salka. 0.61 he leads including Alexis Grimaud there are six that can stop the current leaders from winning medals a long time to cross your fingers and hope that someone makes a mistake Grimaud not doing that. From six to medals has been done here in Pyeongchang. It's an old trick already. Alexis Grimaud. There must be somebody who can replicate it. Sixth fastest after the first run. Tucks himself in tight. It's a good gap. 1.98 faster than uh, Marcus Salka. 2.13.67 is now the Holy Grail. And he hold on to top spot. This man has no intention of that being true. This is Mitch Gawley. Australian co-team captain. He's only dropped a bit of time, it would seem. Can he keep the speed down the bottom end? Gawley really throwing himself into corners. He leads 2.13.67. Not at the races this time around. World champion in... Show in 2017, he has one more chance to become a Paralympic champion. Martin Fransen from Slovakia, Rimon with a few more to hold on. Still to come, Fransen needs 2.13.67, he appears over the top of that hill. 
Impairment means that he can use neither ski pole in the left or right hand. Underdeveloped limbs. For Martin France, the 33 year old from Herbanovo. Two agonizing fourth place finishes, one at a Paralympics, one at a World Championships. That fourth in Sochi came in this event. Can he better the fourth position he got in Russia? Across the line, no, he's outside of Alexis Quimon. Who, well, we said he started six. Martin Franci was fourth fastest going into this. Quimon holds on to the lead. Alexei Bugayev. Neutral Paralympic athlete. There are plenty of people here supporting those neutral Paralympic athletes. Oh, run, 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 run. He's inside. Grumont. He might have his eyes closed. He might be praying. One more mistake from the final three, and the young Canadian gets there. But Bukayev is normally quick. 0.18, 18100s knocks Grimond off top spot. The nerves are jangling. But a man who already has one title wants another. This man has a suitcase full of silver medals and he won't have another. It's big news. Huge news at the top of the medal standings. Arthur Barchet has enjoyed a fantastic opening Paralympic Games. He just couldn't control his right leg through that section of the course and skis out of day five. Well, Teo Gimo won the opening two competitions here in Pyeongchang. Had a bit of a disaster in the Super Combined. But the 21-year-old is on course now. And he's already nearly two seconds clear of Alexei Bogayev. And the stake-free run from here. And Theo Gimur has a hat-trick of gold medals in Pyeongchang. Alexis Quimon is smiling from ear to ear down in the victory area. He has at least a bronze medal. Martin Fratze is on the verge of finishing fourth for a second successive Paralympic Games in this event. That's got to hurt. Into the final quarter of the course then. The spectators can see 21-year-old Theo Hibur. They're used to him being at the top of the order. He's lost a little bit of time and he's a little bit ragged through that section. 2.13.49. Steady. 102. The difference. And Theo Hibur claims the hat trick. Magayev has to settle for Silva. Alexis Quimon will take the bronze. Gibur trying to take out our camera operative at the bottom of the run. You've got a feel for Martin Franze. It's fourth position again for the Slovakian, just as it was in Sochi in 2014. It's the third time in his lifetime that he's finished in fourth at a major event. Well, the top 15 has been and gone. We can't officially announce a gold medal winner just yet. This is Kirk Schoenstein from Canada. He was 16 after the first run. 24-year-old comes into the final few gates of his second run. He's moved himself up nicely into the 12th position. Goes ahead of Jamie Stanton. A 28 year old neutral Paralympic athlete married to Valentina. 
Portugal, Victoria. Got into the sport, following his brother around at a young age. Made an international debut back in 2004. Bronze in the slalom in Sochi. He's found things a little bit harder here in Pyeongchang. Two games to come for Alexander Aryabayev. 9.47 back. 221.94. The very likable Dutchman, age 22. We lucky enough to meet his sister and his mum in between these two runs. And they confess that it's been a tough old season for Jeffrey Stute and the youngster that won two World Championship bronze medals just over a year ago. Hasn't been able to find that sort of form the coaches have told him though he was going in the right direction and another four years of hard slog and skiing events lay ahead for Jeffrey Street still only 22 now resides in the season across the line he goes There's that big See? Iraku Misawa. And well, we uh, saw Misawa coming out of the gate, and now we're seeing him slide down and out of day five. Young's Alpine Centre has been less kind to some than others. Misawa becomes the fourth DNF in the second run of the giant slalom here on day five. Took him a while to come so to a halt, didn't it? Being out for him on that, so we will turn to the next year using the Abrigger's assistance. Watch your sliding on your back or your front. There's not a great deal you can do other than let gravity take it. 34 belongs to Aaron Lindström of Sweden. Big 17 and the only Swede here. Interesting that Sweden, Finland and Iceland all have just the one. They're all in the standing and they're all 17. If you have a thing about numbers. Well, the uh, slight delay here is uh, to just make sure that the sour is not injured oh, or safe. And Aaron Lindstrom looks to put in a more impressive run than perhaps he felt he did in his first run. Some good World Cup places, including a bronze in the tie just before the turn of the year. He was on the same plane as Lindstrom after that, and he was still smiling. 36 hours later, but, uh, if you taste success, whether it be in a World Cup or World Champs or indeed here at a Paralympic Games, it's important to keep feeding from the same menu. Well, he struggled to get back to the table as Lindstrom. Down in 20th after the first run. is a DNS in this competition. But Lindstrom, oh, well, he's moonwalked through that gate. I can't recall seeing it before, and I don't think it will be a short period of time before I see it again, but Aaron Lindstrom pirouetted through the fourth gate to go. Somehow got himself back around. And that's worth a celebration on its own. Oh, 
Michael Brugger of Switzerland out on course now. And he's gone down. There he is. Out of the event. An experienced Swiss skier with uh, a few Paralympic medals in history. And well, sliding out of this one. So just the single arm skier. Rotation on the left side. He's only young, so another that will be using this experience to further educate himself, and he'll know what happens next time he gets the opportunity to race at a Paralympic Games, no matter where that be. 2022, of course, in Beijing. Isn't it funny how the moment they shut the door on one games, automatically and straight away, the athletes and the coaches and the governing bodies immediately start to think about the next challenge. Well, Makushin is uh, dropping time here, so there's work to be done for the young neutral Paralympic athlete at giant slalom level. Keo Gino's rocket fuel 2.12.47. Memories for Makushin. 25 <laughs> from Japan. 7.59 was the difference for Koeki. Put him in 24th place after the first run. You can, you can probably see on the video, but uh, that position he will do. He finishes naturally because of the DNFs, but as long as he doesn't drop too much time. He's 35 now for Makea originally. Now lives in Tokyo. Thanks for the ATV communications team in Tokyo. And Crossing the line, 13.91, so he's uh, now he's one of the pilot at the moment behind the Makushi Lindstrom and Aliyabaya. Plenty of Japanese supporters and flags for him to acknowledge. Four-year-old, I'm sure will be delighted to be in and around the Italian team, which will have huge smiles on day five. Whilst they all obviously ski in their own individual events, they're around their other teammates on the coaches here, in the hotels, in the food halls. Might help but take inspiration if somebody in your team is doing well. And, and Dotti, in his first Paralympic experience, uh, King skier involved in a motorcycle accident in 2011, resulting in the amputation of his left leg above the knee. And now, the Paralympian, at a time of 2.26.82. The sun is dropping out for one last time before it drops behind the mountains, a clearing in the clouds. At the top, this is Kumar Ulvassen from Iceland. 17. For youngsters here at these games. The last memory they want to take home is not finishing or being disqualified. For some, their impairments can cause them to be ill. The uh, volume of DNSs is quite low here in Pyeongchang. DNS denoting did not start. Into the sun-soaked lower part of the Yongshan Alpine Centre comes Kilmar Urvassen.
of Iceland. And I'm sure he'll get a thunderclap from the Icelandic supporters in the stand. It's Tyler Carter. And that was Tyler Carter out. Comes into this section, just uh, couldn't steady himself for that right hander that was coming. And uh, whilst he went through the gates, he uh, did most of it on his front. So, uh, Carter disappointed. I'm sure there'll be words of encouragement. He can go again at some point. Three, Takahashi. Don't want to add himself to the DNF list. Another of our 17-year-olds. A, a first major event at all for Koei Takahashi. Goes to the Agricultural High School in uh, Morioka. Coached by Hideki Arai. And, uh, certainly wouldn't have come into this expecting to medal, but now he's got the gist of how it all works. Understands the scenarios. Has seen a, a big event in the flesh. And Sagahashi can call himself a Paralympian forevermore. Through the gates, he can say, well, I completed the giant slalom on day five in 231.64. Callahan now. Australians will be cheering at the bottom for him. Twenty years of age. Loves his sport, not just confined to the love of winter sports. Uh, Lengthy chats regarding American football have been had between John T and other members of the skiing circuit. As well as his Aussie rules football as well. He's looking to come from up and under his current standings of 29th. <laughs> 2.32.22, he does indeed go into 22nd position. There's the smiley face of Teo Rimeur, just has to wait. Santiago Vega. Santiago. From Chile. The second Olympic Games, he went and DNF'd in the giant slalom in Sochi. And history tends to repeat itself, and uh, he looks up to the sky. Well, he's got the slalom to come. He came 32nd in that in Russia, and he has matched his results of Sochi here in Pyeongchang. But for a moment, just there. He was going to recover it, and then it just skis combined to defeat the man. Chilean is out. Big screen at the start from Connor Hogan. Another new name to the circuit. Hogan will be. Just put the finish so he can say that he's got a time. First outing here in Pyeongchang for the American. He's only 20. Diagnosed with cerebral palsy at 18 months. Caused by a stroke, it affected the upper lobe of his brain. 
full range of motion on his right side. He does have a finishing time at the Pyeongchang Games. 2.32.47. Congratulating Pio Hiller. This is Karvoka of the Czech Republic. 15.41 seconds, the difference already. Karvoka, 35 from Prague. Another of our outstanding athletes with cerebral palsy. Thing. Couldn't get a power snowboard classification in the past, so he took up skiing through the line. Zavirka, 115.85, 231.78. He's got off a couple of places. He's gone past O'Callaghan and Hogan. Spencer Wood. <laughs> the United States of America. And he has a, a motto of work hard in silence and let your success make the noise. It's a impaired muscle power due to a stroke in the wound. Spencer will go and he does right here. Here's Spencer Wood. The years old. Can he get himself higher than the 33rd? Bruno Arnigo, 255, 31. 25th position. Slav Lubinski. The second of the two Czech athletes we have in this event. 45, 10 years more senior than Bavirka. I'm sure the pair of them have got their own personal battles for who finishes higher. His teammate currently in 22nd. Towards the line, two gates to come. Comes through in 25th, 241.06. Have to wait, Pear. Just have to wait. Lovely looking from Croatia. Very young and inexperienced team from Croatia here at these games, but they've all been brought to gain much needed experience. And uh, Luka Davelyak, who's part of the coaching team there, and the senior members, all about growing the sport in Croatia. One of the World Cups in Zagreb. It was the same course that the able bodied athletes had used in one of their World Cups as well. It was a huge story in the para skiing world. Vukic crosses the line. Total time of 248.39. Zagreb in celebration and there was a little wave at home. Julio Andres Soto Ugalde. 28. Uh, the single leg skiers within the standing classification. He has gone by. The classifications were broken down into four groups. They wanted to streamline the event. They wanted to make it fairer across the board. And to make it more exciting for those watching at home. So VI standing. And sitting the ball. And they don't half give us some exciting races.
Julio's wife. Karen Galindo, catching up. Studied medicine at the university. There's no doctor in that time. 253, 75. <laughs> a big smile, isn't it? He knows what's coming. He just has to be patient. Sergei Alexandrov, the penultimate athlete to go. Alexandrov with uh, two prosthetics. You can see below the knee. The bright yellow ski poles and the green helmet and the all-black outfit for the neutral Paralympic athletes. On course right now, Sergei. Six years of age. And he'll prove the line in a time of 2.54.03. It's a round of applause from those within the stands here to watch. And the final athlete in the men's category is Turkey's Mehmet Cekic. He's last out. And he's the oldest of the athletes to take part. On his first rodeo, he went to Sochi. He was 28th in the giant slalom, 35th in the slalom. It was over three minutes in total in Sochi, 3.09. Well, he would want to have time better than that. He'll be inside three minutes, no problem. 2.55.74 does finish in last place, which is 30th. But he has completed the run twice. Even people like Arthur Alche on this occasion can't say that. He, on the other hand, did it super quick. 2.12.47. It's a third goal for Theo Hiller of Switzerland. Alexei Bogayev stood behind him and finished behind him. He's our silver winner, the 20-year-old Lucho Paralympic athlete. He's tasted gold. Makes you hungry for more, but there was no way he was getting past Theo Hiller. Over a second, the difference. Wait. For the final standings, here they are then. Theo Rimer, Alexei Bogayev, and Alexis Rimont. Heartbreak for Martin France. He finishes in fourth for the second successive Paralympic Winter Games in the very same competition. Scrolling through, it's a big old division. Here's the men standing. The biggest of the six that are here at the Games. Mehmet Cekic can say that he finished both his runs as he did in Sochi. He also runs the DNFs, the DNSs at the bottom of the list. Theo has limited use of his right arm, has just the use of one ski pole, has all of the ability in the world to win Paralympic gold medals and he's done it for a third time today. The right side of Theo Gimur's body is affected by his impairment. His impairment does not his affect his speed to come down a mountain. And that is why he stands in the center of that parade. The recognition announcement coming here at the Zhongshan Alpine Center. It'll acknowledge Alexis Grimond, who went from sixth after the first run into third. That Run in the second, 105.44, the quickest second run of the lot. Can he start to combine two runs together and be a serious contender? He's just 18. There's all the time in the world for that. Silver medal winner is only 20 in his own right. Alexei Bogayev already has a goal. Now has a silver and a bronze as well. With number 21 is second, not first, because Theo Gimur 
was magnificent again. He was brilliant on days one and two. He had a bit of a mishap on day four in the Super Combined. But he's combined two runs superly here on day five. And he was just about to run forward and claim his title a little bit prematurely. But it is Teogimur of Switzerland who is the champion of the men's giant slalom standing. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause for the Paralympic Dollars! So the final giant slalom medals to be awarded at the Winter Paralympic Games will come in the men's sitting class, which has been blown wide open by some high-profile exits. Jeroen Kampser of the Netherlands disqualified for missing a gate. Andrew Kirke, a double medalist here at the Games with a DNF. So we'll wait for the runs of our top three. Igor Sigorski, Jesper Pedersen and Tyler Walker who go 13th, 14th and 15th of our 25 skiers about to throw down their second run. The field has been trimmed down. We started off with 37 athletes. We've lost well, well don't go anywhere because we'll go all the way down the way to Diego Segel Moreno who will go last here. So at the top 15, top 15 best times will go in reverse order and then we will see the 16th to 25th quickest down the mountain from that first run. So the benchmark is uh, owned by Tyler Walker of the United States, 106.30. That is uh, just over a second, 1.18 better than Jesper Pedersen and Igor Sigorski operating uh, running well for the poles. He's third going into this second run, but the top 15 separated by over six seconds, 6 seconds, 6.15. And you look at uh, the quickest to the fifth quickest, split by 3.45. Anything can happen, we know that. And uh, just the slightest bump and tumble from one of our front runners can uh, propel an unexpected name into the frame, the podium positions. <laughs> they seem pretty relaxed, don't they? <laughs> so these are our sitting skiers. The athletes who have an impairment affecting their legs, allocated different sporting categorizations based on impairment in the trunk, trunk control, influential for acceleration, balance during racing. It's the last event of the day and it's been a breathless day. It's been a, a warm day as well up the mountainside at the Junction Alpine Center. We look forward, of course, to the uh, slalom events to come later in this winter Paralympic program in Pyeongchang. This the uh, giant slalom. Gates is spaced further apart than in the slalom. Requiring our sit skiers to move in between sets of poles or the gates. The idea is to find the uh, most direct route down the hill, the quickest route, with the tightest and narrowest turns possible. You have to get into the groove of the racing line. The split seconds can make all the difference here. And that certainly, in terms of the gap between first and second, that 1.18 is all that separates Tyler Walker and Jesper Pedersen. But there's absolutely no question here that uh, the current front runners at the midway point in the competition have been held by the exit of some really big names. Look at Andrew Kirker, downhill gold medalist. He won the Super G Silver. He's gone. The Aaron Kampstra missed the gate. Gold medalist in the Super Combine. The new upstart, the young gun. He's gone. So Tyler Walker 
has the lead at midway. He's thrown down one quick run, 106.30. He's got to do it again, but he'll have to wait. He goes 15th in this second run. That is Cairns. Goes first here. So Cairns 15th quickest. 112.45, and that was a, a differential of 6.15 down to Tyler Walker's time. So needs to go better. And it's Cairns then away. Newcomer to major competitions. He's in his second, it's his first Winter Paralympic Games. He was at the World Champs on home snow in British Columbia in 2015. 16th in the GS there. Gives you an idea of his level. Athlete who was born with spider bifida. It works at the Whistler Resort, which hosted the Winter Games and the Paralympic Winter Games eight years ago. Cairns with his 112 through 45 in the first run. He's been scoring since the age of 16. So 10 years on the slope for Alex Cairns. So just assuming Tyler Walker matches his first run, you're looking at an overall time of 212. But... Uh, the 84.86 factored time percentage of Alex Cairns. And uh, we're going to have a look at the combined time from the two runs of Cairns. Bottom right, first over the line. First to complete two runs, 2 2 3, point five two. So that's just uh, pushed him out a little bit from 6.15 down. I suppose you might call it a pro rata score. Pushed out to maybe over 10 seconds behind the potential gold medal winner, which currently stands at Tyler Walker. So Cairns has completed his second run. Kenji Natsume now, his compatriot. Becky Murray crashed out. That was a surprise. Murray was first to go in the first run. But Natsume looking to complete his second here. He was 111 4 5 in his first run down the mountain. That was 5.15 away from Walker's time. So 2-2-3-5-2 two, two, two is the mark to be set by Cairns. First down the hill. And the final drop down here for Kenji Natsume. Third Winter Games. Can he beat the uh, time of Cairns? He can by 0.29. Kenji Natsume moves into the lead. Yeah, that's good about Alice Pierce from Canada. Oh, yeah. Such a performance. The NF there. Frederick Francois had trouble in his first run. He was a, a genuine medal contender here. Well, there was a, a bit of a slip slide at the start of his first attempt down the hill. He managed to correct it. He's not been able to do that here. Frédéric Francois, who picked up a bronze in the Super G, but uh, our first to be scratched off the leaderboard in this second run. Take a look here, you see how wide he gets around that gate. He was wide, oh, and he loses a ski as well. Francois loses a ski on that one. Just trying to cut back his right shoulder down, so... They'll just have to retrieve the ski and uh, move Frederic Francois off the course. Ron Super G, silver in the Super Combined, so a double medalist already. And uh, he would have been hopeful, actually, of getting amongst the medals in this event. But the giant slalom has not brought the best out of him, I'm afraid. Frederic Francois of France. Here comes Corey Peters, fourth down, downhill bronze medalist at these Paralympic Winter Games. Silver medalist in Sochi and a two-time world champion as well, but uh, has got over four seconds to find here if he's going to be competitive. 
12th quickest in the first run. Good results, all told, in Sochi four years ago for Corey Peters. Six in the Super G, just on the outside looking in in the Super Combined where he finished four. And uh, that's silver in the GS four years ago. His mark was 233.20. So you're looking at a 2-2-3-2-3 that leads the competition currently from Kenji Natsume. <coughs> A slightly slower course than we saw four years ago in the mountains above Sochi. <laughs> Gary Peters racing on a, a mono ski. One minute. Corey is 34 years of age into his rugby. Of course he is, he's a Kiwi. New Zealand's flag bearer at the opening ceremony of these Paralympic Winter Games. He's pretty good at it. He performed the same role at the closing ceremony in Sochi. Well, there's a delay here longer than Corey Peters would have wanted. Five, Francois. Come on! Previous run, but there goes Corey Peters. Downhill, bronze medalist, but he's got time to make up here. The New Zealander, a double world champion. He won the Super G in Canada in 2015. He won the downhill in Canada in 2015. Bumped down one step on the podium to the silver medal position in the Super G in Tavizio last year and second also in the downhill. It was a trio of silvers in the world champs. The giant slalom silver medalist as well in 2015. Fourth in the GS. In the World Championships prior, we know he has got speed, Corey Peters, but has he got enough speed here today? So he's 2.28 inside the time of Kenji Natsube. And if he can just ride the bumps here and come down safely and quickly, then he will be our new leader. 1.11.07 was Corey's first run time. And if he matches that, it'll be enough. To take the lead, so three games to go, two and one, and Corey Peters by three seconds is our new leader. The All Blacks going crazy. World Championship bronze medalist Marcus Vatterhofer is next down here. He was 110.75. That was 4.45 seconds slower than Tyler Walker. So again, keep your eye on the bottom right time. He's got a, a factor time of 78.51 by four hundredths. He's inside the time of Corey Peters. This is generally the way it goes. The deeper we get down the starting order, we see the lead changing hands. 20.23 and that time is under threat here as Vatterhofer starts his descent into the home straight just two gates to go 220.23 is the target and he's made it by almost half a second 0.45 so we have a new leader and his name is Marcus Vatterhofer from Austria world champs bronze medalist Divisional first here, but there's a long way to go. 38 years young, Han Sang Min. 
Went 110.73 in the first run, 4.43 off the pace, more than respectable. And for the winter power athletes in Salt Lake City, 2002. Silver there in the uh, giant slalom LW12. Since then, the categorizations have been tweaked somewhat. His best Paralympic Winter Games was Salt Lake City 16 years ago, a pair of sevenths and the silver in the GS 219.78. It's going to be tight here. He's not quite going to make it. Indeed, it's 221. 0.31, so third provisionally. But uh, Han will drop out of the medal placings. Italy's René Di Silvestro comes next. He was 4.26 seconds slower than Tyler Walker. Ninth best time by almost half a second. He's quicker than Vatterhofer though at the intermediate. And a mark bottom right to beat, to target, to aim for is 219.78 at the start of the descent. Uh, I think he's got a bit too much to do, picking up speed at the end, or oh, has he? Well, it's a great finish from De Silvestro. He's made it by 0.67 to 19.11. Next down, eighth quickest in run one. 4.10 seconds off the pace, the defending. Winter Paralympic champion, Christoph Kuntz. He's not going to double up, though. He also won the downhill in Vancouver. Super G world champion last year, also a two-time Winter Paralympic champion. So the uh, marks are coming right down now by over half a second. He's ahead of Renf. Rene De Silvestro, 2.19.11 is the combined time to aim for here. And Christoph Kuntz starts his descent. Here's a look at it right now. That Swift final away. slalom through the remaining gates. Two from the end, one from the end. He's done it by almost a second. Christoph Kuntz, defending Olympic champion, slots back to the top of the leaderboard. But we've still got Sikorsky to come and Pedersen to come and Tyler Walker and also Roman Rabel, the triple bronze medalist from Sochi. He uh, got a third place in this event. The giant slalom, also third in the super combined. And the slalom, twice a world championship silver medalist as well. But he's been quick here in Pyeongchang. And uh, he's looking to pick it up here, coming down towards the final section. This is the point at which the athletes, the skiers, although they're traveling at a fair old lick, can see the crowd. Maybe they can hear the crowd too. 218.16, the mark puts the target. No. Just at the end, he couldn't pick it up. And he's uh, just outside by three quarters of a second. Robin Rabel of Austria, provisional second. Well, Christoph Kuntz knows that uh, he won't be top of the podium for long. Here comes Takeshi Suzuki, slalom gold medalist in Sochi. Three winter Paralympic medals, all told. But it's not been his best games here. Closest he's done, fourth in the super combined, so just off the podium, ninth in the downhill, 13th in the super G. This is his. Uh, Best shout, really, of uh, doing something. 109.90, so he was inside 1 minute 10 seconds in his first run. It equated to a differential of only 3.60. Down to Tyler Walker, and he's uh, moved into the lead by 0.36. So Suzuki bumps Christoph Kutz off top spot. But... Uh, Suzuki himself will uh, wonder how long he will last here. 
And Nicholas Biscuit Hudson of Chile comes next. It was a really good time in the first run, but he's overcooked it in the second. That was a shame because he threw down a really competitive time. He was fifth quickest in the first run, but what does that matter? You've got to do it twice. Now we look under three and a half seconds away from Tyler Walker's time while well, living on the edge in the second run, really pushing it, firing on every cylinder. And, uh, you can burn out, and that's what's happened to Biscuit Hudson. So uh, we are moving through now into our genuine medal contenders. Four quickest, run one, just 2.98 away from Tyler Walker. Akira Kano, three-time Winter Paralympic gold medalist. He did it in the uh, Super G in Vancouver. He did it in the Super G in Sochi. He won the downhill in Sochi. He knows what it's all about, but he will know that the GS is not his forte. He's now chasing down the time of Takeshi Suzuki, and he's inside it as well by 0.15, so he could be looking out of Japan. 1-2 at present. 2-17.80 is the target. It's going to be close, but he will feel he can do it. Final drop down here for Akira Kano, DNF, in the downhill this time round, but he's a multi-medalist at... The Paralympics and world champs, and he can't quite manage it. 0.32 away of the time of Suzuki, but it's still Japan 1 and 2, just not in the order that Akira Kano would have wanted. So, at the uh, giant slalom competition, ended after one run, this man, Igor Sikorsky of Poland would have the bronze medal. He'll obviously want a, a better medal, but he might have to settle for the bronze. He's uh, over a second better than Takeshi Suzuki's time. 217.80 is the mark. So Tyler Walker's 106.30. If Walker matches that, that's a 212. And that ultimately will be the uh, mark, I think, that wins the gold medal. So he's outside that Sikorsky, but it's still a really strong run at 2.15.9.0. He's not going to hang on to top spot, I don't think, Sikorsky, but it's going to be a medal. Which colour? Yeah. Only two to come. Yes, for Pedersen now. We'll look to push Sikorsky off the top spot. Pedersen, the bronze medalist in the Super G, the newcomer. This with Pedersen at just 18 years of age, showing maturity and skill, and now way beyond his years. Only announced his presence last year at the Tavizio World Championships, where he was eighth downhill, seventh in the Super G, sixth super combined, fifth in the slalom but he's on course for a medal here 21590 is the target he's going to be well inside it to the tune of 2.45 seconds wow nearly two and a half seconds better than Sikorsky and uh, tumbles into the hoardings but by then the work had been done so Sikorsky bumped down likely to have the bronze Pedersen in the gold medal slot at present. And only Tyler Walker can deny him. So, Tyler Walker. He's been at the Winter Paralympics since Torino 2006. And come close to the Winter Paralympic podium before these games in Pyeongchang. But here he comes, Walker. Helped by Kamsa's disqualification, and of course, no Andrew Kirker, but it's another United States athlete looking really, really good here. 213.45 is the target. He's not been able to match it. By 0.34, he's come up short. And a phenomenal gold medal has been won by Jesper Pedersen. And Tyler Walker, well, he will feel he's thrown it away. He still has the silver. But he was leading at halfway. 
And 18-year-old Jesper Pedersen has done it. Wow. We still have more athletes to complete their second run. The uh, 10 athletes from position 16 to 25 come down now and will look for a, a respectable finish, as high a finish as possible, including Kurt Oatway, the Super G gold medalist. What an upgrade it's been already here at these games after his performances in Sochi, where his best is fifth in the downhill, and he tumbles and stumbles over the line. Almost nine seconds behind the competition leading time of Jesper Pedersen. 222.41. And uh, he gave it his all. So, Oakway moves into the athletes area at the finish. Here comes Dino Sokolovic from Croatia. So it's all about bettering the first run of time here for our remaining athletes. As far as Sokolovic was concerned, that was 112.99. 6.69 seconds outside at the moment. So Sokolovic. 12 seconds outside, 113.10, so he was a little bit slower in the second run than his first attempt down the hill. 15th at present for Dino Zagolovic. Thank you. Awesome skiing by you both. Well, the champagne is on ice, but uh, it won't be too long before we'll hear the sound of corks popping. Camera in the game. So, the third Winter Paralympic Games for Yasmin Bamba, 18th place, 18th quickest at the first run, 7.22 down, down the hill. an indication just of the tightness Five. of the field really. life in the former Yugoslavia in the early 1990s, a, a nation ravaged by civil war. Uh, has represented Serbia internationally, but since has represented the United States the para-alpine skiing team, he gained his US citizenship eight years ago in 2010. Five zero point eight eight zero is the second intermediate split time of Jesper Pedersen, by the way. So Yasmin Bamba is way down on that. Two nineteen eleven competition leading time, and Bamba now comes into the final section. Oh, and with the finish line in sight, he's tumbled. A dreadful shame for Yasmin Bamba. So close to a finish and a more than respectable Winter Paralympic finish here in the giant slalom, but just in the blink of an eye, the finish becomes a did not finish. Murapelli now from Switzerland. 113.73, his first run time, just around about seven and a half seconds away from Tyler Walker's mark. But Walker, remember, has been usurped. Bob Barnes to see the medal position by uh, our gold medal winner, Jesper Pedersen. Over 11 seconds behind Pedersen's intermediate split time, the second split time. Tommy here on his Winter Paralympic debut. And uh, he's looking at the lower orders, really. Sokolovic's time of 22609 is the target. 
Firing on the manager here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 16. 227-95 for Murapeli of Switzerland. With number 86, Lee, who turned 38 two days ago. Six to last to complete their second run in the men's giant slalom for the city alpine para skiers. 16th, 18th, 16th. Oh, so results so far in the alpine program. The with a pair of DNFs in the slalom and the giant slalom. So a final placing is already an upgrade and he will be absolutely delighted with that. He's competed in a Winter Paralympic Games in his own nation. It's a once in a lifetime deal. And Lee making sure he finishes here. Won medals as a, a wheelchair basketball player at Asian Para Games in years gone by. Pulls up. But uh, he's regrouped, he's able to finish, and kind of just turn in and almost uh, ski yourself to a standstill. But determined to make the drop down, which uh, will hold into view now. Just at the brow of the hill, oh, he's not been able to manage it. What a shame for Lee Chi Wan, he was so close, close but no cigar. So four skiers now, DNFing in the second run. Oh, way bounced up. And, uh, well, that's not a lucky break at all there for Lee Chi Wong. We're seeing Simon Valner now of Austria. Valner, 116.02. Still inside 10 seconds of Tyler Walker's mark from that first run. 219.11. And De Silvestro, he's not going to make that. He's going to look to break the uh, mark of 227.95. Murapeli kind of giving himself a little too much to do and uh, he's not quite got the speed over the finish line here. Team in Valna, so it's a 17th place here. Just over 17 seconds away from Jesper Pedersen. Mark Sawyer from Australia here. Fourth to last to go in this men's giant slalom for the sitting para athletes. So Sawyer was 10.65 away. His rank was 22 at the end of run one. So he will better that thanks to our DNF. So want to finish as high as possible. Very, very wide there, but managing to correct it. And he's in at 229, 9-4, That's a more than respectable run. Second time down the mountain there. Well, they will cheer him up. Stephen Lawler now for the United States. A, a silver medalist at the World Champs in 2013 in the downhill. Well, not a medal here, and I'm afraid not the finish in the giant slalom at these Paralympic Winter Games. A DNS in this event in Sochi. And a, a DNF four years on. So, Sam Tate, second to last to go. 117.36, 11 seconds away. Rank 24 for Sam Tate. A newcomer 
But the finish here is a respectable outcome. Suffered a, a motorbike accident in 2013 and uh, suffered paraplegia as a result. Just concentrating on coming down here. Sante. Thirteen seconds away to 35-1. Well, that would better the Valner's time. I think if you the top 15 here would require him to go better than 2-2-6-0-9. Oh, that might be just within his sights as he uh, starts the drop down. Could be a top 15 finish. Can he manage it? Not quite. And it's going to be 2 2 8 2 8 And it's 17 in the end for Sam Tate. So, we're nearly there. Our medalists can nearly celebrate for sure. Last runner down in the second run in the men's GS for sitting para-athletes is Diego Seguel Moreno. But in his determination for a finish, he's overcooked it. That's a DNF and it's disappointing, of course it is, for Diego Seguel Moreno. So, at last, uh, one, two, three, can celebrate. We ended up with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six DNFs. The athletes who skied out and crashed out in this second run. So, at last, celebration time, party time for Jesper Pedersen, just 18 years of age, is our gold medalist in the sitting category in the men's GS. Well, he wants to share the love with Tyler Walker, but I'm not too sure Tyler will be in that kind of mood because he had this competition in the palm of his hand at the end of run one, but he's just been pushed out of it. Tyler Walker into the silver medal position by just 0.34, and Igor Sikorsky, he was in third place at the end of the first run. He remains exactly there at the end of the second to pick up the bronze medal for Poland. So goodness me, the medals have been spread around the nations on this giant slalom day at the Johnson Alpine Center. I make that Norway's first medal of the day and it's straight in with the gold. The United States have the silver and uh, Poland with the bronze medal. So Bib 67, worn by 18 year old Jesper Pedersen. What a time to throw down a gold medal run outside the medals in the, the five disciplines at the uh, Tarvizio World Champs. Seventh in the Super G. But a fabulous second run. Ladies and gentlemen, One please welcome the medalists from the Alpine Skiing Men's Giant Slalom City. Two seconds better, two seconds quicker. That is first run against the Pedersen. That is what has bumped Tyler Walker down the Gold medals on this Bronze day of the giant slalom at the Winter Paralympics Poland. for uh, the Slovakia, for France, for Japan, for Italy, for Switzerland, and now for Norway. Poland get on the podium as well, just in the nick of time. Thanks to Igor Sikorsky's bronze. Representing the United States of America. Tyler Walker, the veteran. He's been at the Winter Paralympics since 2006 and he has a giant slalom silver here. Up from sixth in Sochi, but our gold medalist 
Uh, winter Paralympic champion is Jesper Pedersen. Absolutely brilliant second run. He's upgraded from his super combined bronze. Fourth in the super G. And now he has a gold. Yes, for Pedersen, you wonder just how good he can be. What a time in the second run. So that is our podium to conclude a breathless day's action at the Junction Alpine Centre, giant slalom day, and uh, we have been treated to some fabulous racing. Boy, have we. Sigorski and Walker and Pedersen carrying off the medals in the men's sitting category in the giant slalom. Just brilliant. Well, the sun was out and it almost knows that the uh, program's over because there's hefty cloud cover just sweeping above the mountains here in uh, Pyeongchang County. And I think just in the uh, nick of time, really, we've completed the program. But what a program today in the giant slalom. We have the slalom to come to complete the Alpine program here at the uh, Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. That comes later, but in the meantime, we'll get our breath back here after a stunning day at the GS. Well, day five here at Yongshan Alpine Centre was just another demonstration that whilst we have a certain amount of people that seem to win everything in their classification, other events can throw up some massive surprises. We hope it entertained. We hope you'll come back for more. This was day five. Yeah, thank you so but much from the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Australia Games, for now, it's goodbye. That puts an end to your giant slalom. Please follow staff directions on while exiting the venue, but join us back here on Friday. Snowboarding the Bank Slalom will come your way. Start time will be 10.30 Friday for Snowboarding Bank Slalom. Goodbye everyone, hope you have a safe journey home.